In March 2022, we took a small group tour to Oman, organised by Cox and Kings. We flew into the capital, Muscat, and over nine days did a clockwise circuit through a mix of coastal, desert and mountain landscapes. Muscat has a number of very impressive modern buildings, such as this opera house. In contrast with the Emirates, Oman is stuck with traditional architectural styles. The country has been extensively modernised, including many of the souks or markets. And while this improves their environment, it does somewhat detract from the local character. The Sultanate of Oman, to give it its proper name, is an absolute monarchy, and images of the Sultan and other members of the royal family are ubiquitous. We had a quick look at a museum of traditional Omani costumes and weapons, then one of the Sultan's palaces. Our second day started with a visit to the very aptly named Grand Mosque, which is open to suitably dressed non-Muslims. There were 15 in our tour group, plus a guide, Mahir, who was with us throughout the tour. The mosque is very elegant and vast, with a capacity of 20,000 worshippers. This is the relatively modest women's prayer hall. And this is the men's prayer hall. After our tour of the mosque, we drove about 40 miles northwest along the coast to Barker, where we visited a rather underwhelming local market. before moving inland to this more impressive fort and museum. Our tour included a picnic lunch today at this rather ramshackle spot. On our way southeast we stopped in Kuryat at another disappointing fish market. And then through much more dramatic scenery and to this amazing sinkhole. While based in Muscat, we travelled in a full-size coach, but for the rest of the tour, we used four Toyota Land Cruisers to cope with the off-road conditions. After lunch by the sea, in the town of Sur, we continued along the coast to the Turtle Reserve at Ras Al Jins. March is the wrong time of year to see turtles nesting or hatching, but we walked to the beach in the evening and did see one turtle laying egg. The next morning we set off inland, stopping at this wadi for a swim. And the rather strange sensation of having fish nibbling your feet. We stopped off briefly to get tyre pressures reduced before heading out into the desert. And this was just what I'd imagined Arabian desert to be like. Endless rippling sand. We watched the sunset from the top of a large dune. One intrepid member of our group marched off into the distance to give an idea of the scale of the landscape. Just as the sun went down, the strong wind picked up, blowing sand everywhere and making driving conditions more interesting.
We stayed the night at the Arabian Oryx camp, in our individual bungalows. It isn't possible to see Oryx in the wild, as they were wiped out by poachers. But they have a few captive ones at the camp. All too soon we left the desert, and stopped off at another market. The signs make it look interesting, but unfortunately there were no animal markets taking place while we were there, just fish again. That was a frustration with our itinerary. We didn't seem to be visiting places when they were at their most interesting. As we travelled north towards the mountains, we saw lots of date palms, and also several abandoned old villages. As part of the modernization of the country, people living in old mud-built homes were rehoused in nearby newly built villages. We then went up into the mountains and stayed at a lovely hotel with stunning views. We had lovely weather throughout our stay in Oman, blue skies and dry heat, low thirties centigrade, even up here at about 2,000 metres above sea level, it was pleasantly warm. Nizwa is the largest town in the mountains, and has an impressive 17th century fort. I didn't find Nizwa's souk very interesting, and we were again on the wrong day to see a livestock market. But we did get to taste many different types of dates. Oman's highest mountain is Jebel Shams, at just over 3,000 metres. For me, the mountain scenery and desert landscapes were the highlights of Oman. In a largely abandoned old village, we visited a house that had been preserved, and were treated to demonstrations of traditional coffee grinding and bread making. At this pottery, the clay is prepared in ponds, before being put through this mincing machine, ready for the potter to do his thing. On our last full day in Oman, we drove back to Muscat by a dramatic unmade mountain track, past the wonderfully named Snake Gorge Canyon. Overall, I was a little disappointed with this tour, and will be unlikely to choose Cox and Kings again, but Oman is a great place to visit. <laughs>